In this episode of Strength Coach Tutorials, we're going to be creating this 1RM calculating spreadsheet which calculates your 1RM based on your velocity and the load lifted. This is going to be a really useful tool if you're using any velocity based training devices and want to know what your 1RM range is on a daily basis without having to go to failure. So let's get after it. Okay, so to start this project, um, we are starting with a spreadsheet here and it has a lot of things already filled out on it. I have a spot where I'm going to be able to put in my load lifted and my mean velocities um, and that would be measured with something like um, a linear position transducer or an accelerometer or really whatever tool you kind of have access to. <clears throat> and then we would do an incremental sort of loading protocol and then take the highest mean velocity at each load. And then what we want to be able to do is graph that and then have it um, give us our 1RM. Now the reason that this works is because there is a pretty linear relationship between the load lifted and the mean velocity that you're going to be able to lift it at. And because it's linear, we can use a linear regression equation and actually calculate where that line would cross the axis of load. And that gives us an idea of what our 1RM might be at a given velocity. So to give you an idea what this looks like, this is actually a slide that I have in a in a 1RM or sorry in a velocity based training presentation that I give to the summer interns at the the place where I work. But essentially what we're going to be doing is we take the loads and the velocities and then we're going to graph those and give us our um, linear equation. If you remember back to high school algebra, it's y equals mx plus b and we're going to actually solve for x. And what x is gonna be in this case is the load lifted because we're gonna know um, all of the other variables. We're gonna know what our y, and that's gonna be our mini minimum velocity threshold, and that is a value that is established previously in the research, or you can also test for this value. Um, your m is gonna be the slope of the line, and then the b, is going to be the y-intercept and we're going to calculate that based on the line that we get. And then when we rearrange that equation to solve for x, we're going to get y minus b over m. In other words, we're going to get velocity threshold minus y-intercept over our slope. And that is going to give us an approximation of our 1RM load. Now what is going to change this is the velocity threshold that we actually use is going to change the load that we get. So if I go back to my sheet here, what I have is some established velocity thresholds here on the right side that um, have been established for the different lifts. Um, in general, your bench press velocity threshold is going to be somewhere between 0.12 to 0.18, your back squat 0.25 to 0.35, and your trap bar deadlift 0.22 to 0.32. There are other relationships with other lifts, but what this is, is the minimum velocity that you can lift the actual exercise and still complete a rep. So any slower than that and the rep would not be able to be completed. Thus, this would be the velocity of um, a 1RM load. The interesting thing about the minimum velocity threshold is it is pretty similar across all conditions. So if we were lifting a 1RM load and say our minimum velocity threshold was 0.12, if we were lifting a 3RM load, our third rep of that would be approximately 0.12. Our fifth rep of a 5RM load would be approximately 0.12 as well. Um, and any failure load would be approximately the same um, velocity. And that's what actually allows this relationship to work and allows us to actually calculate out our 1RM based off of velocity. Okay, so that's all of the background that you're gonna to need to know in order to make this work. And what I have over here is I just have some values. So I'm just gonna copy those in and put them into our kind of calculation area. And what I have here is this was a test that we did with a student and they basically put tw basically 20 kilos on um, their back squat and we just worked all the way up and we took the um, highest average velocity 
of a rep during the protocol and we kind of graphed it here and what you'll actually see is the 20 kilogram is a little bit slower than the 40 kilogram because this particular student worked all the way up to 180 so the 20 kilogram was almost not heavy enough to elicit um, a high enough velocity for that to sort of register or they were just warming up or, or something like that okay so that is the background information and we have the values now. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is actually graph these values. So what I'm gonna do is highlight all of these and I'm going to go to insert and I'm gonna pick a recommended chart and I'm gonna go over to all charts and what I want is actually an XY scatter. And I want one where the velocity is on the Y axis and the load is on the X axis or the horizontal axis. So this one looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna take this chart and I'm gonna stick it um, in this box that I've just created. So what I'm gonna do is highlight the chart, go to format, and then go to align. I'll hit snap to grid, snap to shape, and I'm just going to drag that into that box. And give me one second here, drag it into the box. And then there we go. So that is our chart. And already you can see that there's a pretty linear relationship going down um, from the top left down to the bottom right. And I'll just delete the chart title because I don't really need that. So what we want to be able to do is find out where this is actually going to cross um, basically the, the x-axis. Or well not quite the x-axis, we want to find out where it's going to cross at the minimum velocity threshold. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is if I go to click on the chart and go up to chart design, I'm going to add a chart element and what I want to add is a tread line and I want a linear tread line. So we can see this now adds a linear tread line that basically splits all of the values down the middle. Okay. And then from there we need to create our equation. So what I can do is I can double click on the tread line and it is going to open this um, menu up and give us the format tread line option. And if I go down here, I can click on display the equation and I can move that up sort of out of the way, click back on my tread line. And then I also want to display the R squared value. And what the R squared value basically is, is how representative um, these this tread line is of these dots. Okay, so in general, this R squared represents about 96 percent of the of the dots okay so it's a pretty strong value really this isn't going to work very well for anything under a 0.95 so you want to be above 0.95 with 0.96 or above 0.98 being um being a better value to kind of have because that is going to be a much more linear relationship and make the estimation that much stronger okay so the higher this r squared value is up to a maximum of one the stronger the relationship is actually going to be and you'll see how that kind of manifests itself in a second so that's all the graphing that we have to do now it's just about doing a little math okay if you remember from our y equals mx plus b the slope is going to be the m okay in this case it is minus 0.0055 we can take that value right there and I could just type in minus zero zero, sorry, 0 0.0055 and that would be our slope. Or what I can do is I can use the slope function. So in here I'll type equals slope and what it's gonna ask me for is all of my known y's. In this case, that is gonna be my velocity values and then comma all of my known x's, in this case my load values and I'm gonna close that off and what you'll see is it'll give me that exact same value. The next one that we want is actually our intercept value. So in the same way, we would just type equals intercept, open that up, it's gonna ask for known y's and known x's, and right there, it's gonna give me my intercept value. If you remember from y equals mx plus b, 1.5367, right here we got 1.5367. And the last thing we want is our R squared value. So I'm gonna type equals RSQ to get an R squared value. Open that up. It's gonna ask again for known Y's. 
and known x's. And when I close that off, it's gonna give me my 0.9601, okay? So that is how to do all of the math. And for this version of the equation, we have the velocity on the y-axis and the load on the x-axis. When we perform this equation, it's going to tend to overestimate the 1RM just a little bit, okay? And it will overestimate it um, about that four-ish percent from the R squared value, okay? So um, just keep that in mind. When we go back to our slide, we now need to do Y minus B over M. In other words, we need the velocity threshold minus the Y intercept over the slope, okay? So let's do that equation now in this one RM value. We'll go equals velocity threshold 0 0.3 because we're doing a back squat minus the intercept. And I'm gonna put those in brackets so that it performs that value first. And bracket, and then divided by the slope and I'll hit equals. And what you're gonna notice is it's gonna give us a 1RM value of about 226, in this case, kilograms, okay? So what this is saying is that at 0 0.3 meters per second, if we were to go across, this is going to connect at about 226 kilograms, and that is what this equation is now estimating our 1RM as, okay? Now, I've also seen this done another way where we would flip the axes and you would have basically the load on the y-axis and then the velocities on the x-axis. And when you do it this way, it tends to underestimate just a little bit, okay? So if the initial way overestimates by about that four-ish percent, this way is gonna underestimate by about that four-ish percent. So when I'm calculating this out, I will do both of them and then use them as a range. So in this case, we can actually copy this formula and now when it's asking for my known y's, I'm gonna put the load values because I'm flipping the graph. If you could imagine in your mind, we're flipping it. So now our um, threshold, you would be thinking this graph is going up and to the right now. So it's gonna be minus um, 1.75 is gonna be the y-intercept. Okay, so this one would actually go down into the negative and Sorry, the slope would be minus 1.75 and then the intercept, I could go equals intercept. Open that up, it's gonna ask me for my known y's. In this case, it is the load. And then it's gonna ask me for my velocities. Close that down. The r squared is going to be the same thing, equals rsq. And it's gonna ask me for my known y's and my known x's. And what you'll notice is this value is the exact same, okay? Okay, now that we've done these calculations, we're gonna solve our y equals mx plus b equation again. And if we go back to our slide, because we've actually flipped and put the load on the y-axis and the velocity on the x-axis, these values flip as well, okay? So the x now becomes the minimum velocity threshold and we're actually gonna be solving for the y, which is now our predicted 1RM load. So if we were to be here, it'd be y equals mx plus b. In other words, what we're gonna do is go equals, um, our m and x, okay, are gonna be our minimum velocity threshold times our slope, and then we're gonna add our intercept. And I'll hit enter, and you can see now this has underestimated, it's 221 kilos versus the 226 from the initial one. Okay, and just to demonstrate how that works, I have another set of values here with a lot tighter R squared value. So I'm gonna paste those values in. And what you're gonna notice is the R squared value is basically one or it's 0.9994. And when I calculate these out, this one is 174.79 and the other one is 174.75. So you can see as the R square value tightens up a little bit, it's gonna give us a lot better estimation of our 1RM. So I'll put the initial values back in. Whoops, I'll put them back in normally. Okay, and then the last piece of the puzzle is I'm gonna create this range. 
Um, and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a combination of formulas and um, text. So I'm going to go equals. I'm going to use an M round formula, M round. And I want the higher number, so the x, y normal. And I'm going to round that to the nearest 0.5. And then I can put and. And then anything I type in quotations is going to type out as text. Quotations, space dash space quotations and m round in the lower value comma 0.5 and i'll close that off and when i hit enter what it's going to give me is an actual range so what i could say to my athlete is i believe your 1rm range is somewhere in the 221 to 226 kilos okay and then one other thing we could do if we want to spice this up a little bit i could just take the average of these two values and it's 223 and now what I can do is actually figure out what the percent RM would be for these values here so I could take this value and I could go equals this divided by this equals sorry it's the other way around equals this divided by this and then that would be 9% and if I dragged, well, I just got to lock the one in. If I lock the average in, hit OK, and then I drag this down, what it's going to give me is the actual percentages of 1RM that I probably lifted when I was doing the test. Okay, so that's just a quick way to start to calculate out your 1RM. There are a lot of tools that will already do this for you. For you. I know that the gym aware is the push. Um, all of those types of units do this calculation behind the scenes, but I still think it's important to know how this is being done so that when you're talking to your athletes or clients, um, you can tell them how this works and, and what it's and what it's actually calculating. So I hope this video helps you out. And if you did find value in this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and I will continue to post new videos. And until then, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.